take one. There's going to only be one take of this. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> the hub with bows of frory. Fara ra 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 ra. Tis the freezing to be rory. Fara ra 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 ra. He's a loser, baby. So why don't you kill me? I'm sorry. What I can't was, remember. Well, so hey, what, what? what was the first line of that song? Sing that one more time. So un pedrador. I'm a loser, baby. I'm saying. Are you singing soy un pedrador? Yeah. What the hell does that mean? I'm a loser. Okay. Are those the lyrics? Or did you just make that up? Have you ever heard of Beck, Johnny? Yeah, I, I know the song you're he referring to. He transcends genres while he recreates them. Oh, yes. <laughs> Beautifully said. We should have used that line yes. in Eye of the Beholder. <laughs> we should have used it in Eye of the Beholder. Should have. I was so sad that that didn't go to more festivals. Yep. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's just one giant ass joke. I know. Who doesn't love an ass joke? Well, you spoiled it for anybody who hadn't seen it. Well, you know what? I'm sure everybody that follows us has seen, well, maybe, hopefully. I don't fucking know. Spoiler Whatever. alert. Cares. Eye of the Beholder. <laughs> um, you should be good any anytime you want, Johnny. Do we want to start right now, or do we want to... Just twiddle our thumbs and uh, take lint out well, of our belly buttons. Uh, and... I mean, it would have been cool if we started at 10 o'clock, like oh, yeah. I logged on to do. Yeah, but exactly. you know, we, we never, are. never start on time. We, on, on I mean, average, I think horrible. we're about, no, no, it's a company to not be able to start on time no, for things. Oh, this is, this is a, this is we a are fun. a horrible company, Neil. Get the fuck out of here. This is a recreational thing. It does not encompass who Leadfeather is as a whole. Right. It's not like the main thing we're doing. I think we're on average <laughs> between, <laughs> between Gary and I, I think we're on average starting late between 45 minutes to an hour and a half, honestly. We're making it happen, people. We're, <laughs> For that, because we still didn't make it at 1030. Okay, that's, <laughs> no, no, we're, that's it, it's fine. totally okay. Gary and I have a tendency to tell Neil that we're going to start probably about half an hour to an hour earlier than we plan on. And so now he's just gotten to the point. If I tell him like 930, he'll jump on at 11 and we're just like setting up. And we're like, hey, hey, Neil, welcome. And he's like, you guys still aren't fucking ready. God damn it. <laughs> So it's good. The Jamaican time. That sounds like. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. As my girlfriend says, it's it's Cuban standard time for sure. Just uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, it's it's like a it's like Gandalf. You know, the uh, wizard arrives precisely when he means to. So what well, are you going to do? Well, mean to arrive earlier, Gandalf. No one says that in the movie. They should have. You just ru- <laughs> you can't you can't change a perfect script like Lord of the Rings. I'm sure you can. Did you see the extended edition? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't really cha- they didn't change anything. It was oh, extended did. from the original script. They what had do you mean? A Twenty minute the- sex scene with Ian McKellen. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Only Ian. McKellen. <laughs> Only Ian. McKellen. I don't want to fucking watch that. Are you Christopher kidding me? Christopher Lee was watching him through the plantar. Oh my god! This is, this is the worst conversation ever to start in episode two. I know. All I heard was you have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That good, good, good save, Carlton. Good save. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that's all I heard too. Hopefully, that's all she heard. Uh, hey guys, welcome to another episode of I Don't Give a Flick. Uh, I am your host Johnny Blackburn. Alongside me, as they are every week, are my co-hosts Gary Elmore and Neil Riley. And this week, we are privileged to be having with us local and national based actors, Carlton Cottle. And Shanna Taft, guys, welcome back to the show. Good to be here. Hey, Butcher's my name. It's Shauna Toft. Shauna Toft. There you go. Carlton, I said your yeah. last name. I pronounced it correct this time, right? I think I've gotten Carlton's last name wrong on like I, six different occasions. I don't care anymore. You just show me some love, and I just I love how love there it. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, Shauna, I'm, this is the second time I messed it up, because I know I messed it up on the first time you were on the show. So, give me till our 
fourth episode, provided you want to come back and you're not too insulted to, and I will have it right at that sure. point. I promise. I promise. I'm just... I, no problem. I'm horrible at memorizing pronunciation of words. Well, it's a weird spelling, too, and it's a weird last name, so, you know, it's all good. <laughs> hey, hey, you share a last name with one of our most famous presidents, so, you know. No, I don't. It's an O, not an A. Come on, Johnny. Oh, let me write. He's that obviously right. talking about 29th president Edgar Toft. So. <laughs> Edgar Allen Toft. So we're just gonna we're, we're gonna erase all of that. 49th oh, no. president. Oh, and no, welcome sir. back to this week's episode of <laughs> no, I don't sir. give a flick. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> all right. Oh. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so this week we're gonna be uh, this entire month actually. Uh, we hope that everybody has enjoyed and is not offended by our opening song. Nor do we care. That we the true. Nor do we care. Um, but it is paying homage to those of you that have seen a Christmas story. Uh, we we sing our rendition of Deck the Halls. That the. Chinese I, don't people. The, I don't remember the name of the family that that's sitting in the Chinese restaurant, but uh, whatever the the Wang. waiters sing to them. What'd you say, Carlton? <laughs> Just said Wang. I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The, the the family that that it's based around, but it could be. Who knows? <laughs> um. And anyways, all this month we are bringing to you guys uh, special episodes dedicated and built around the Christmas season. Uh, last week we went ahead and talked about. Uh, a bunch of Christmas movies and discussed, are they really Christmas movies or not? We had some pretty lively debates on that. And uh, this week, we're going to be jumping into a lot of different categories. We're going to be talking about the best, worst, and most overrated Christmas films of all time. Uh, get everybody's opinion on that here for the panel. Uh, but before we start, I uh, want to go ahead, uh, just in case, I don't know how much Gary got at the beginning with the recording of that, but I do want to go ahead and plug our guests here at the beginning real fast and see what they have been up to during the holiday season here. Um, we've had a few episodes over the last couple of months talking about the change in film industry around covid and during the pandemic and it looks like things are starting to pick back up um so carlton and shauna you guys had just gotten done apparently you just wrapped literally a couple minutes ago with uh another movie so do you guys want to go ahead and uh plug that for a second time really quick sure go ahead shauna um, well, I mean, moments ago was Vid Chronicles. Uh, it's it's an episode on Vid Chronicles, which is on YouTube. It's a series, and we'll be doing a lot more of those, especially in January. So uh, just be be awesome. looking for Vid Chronicles on YouTube. Um, and then we recently wrapped on Texas Kill City, which is a, a feature length film. Uh huh. Perfect. And uh, and so we and we we're SWAT officers in that. And actually, today I also did another uh, rap video. Wow. Okay. God. So you you've been busy. So <laughs> where where are you guys right now? Like, are you guys are you guys in Dallas right now? Are you in Austin? Where where yeah, we we're, are? We're in Dallas. in Dallas. I'm heading back tonight. I'm on Walker, Texas Ranger tomorrow. I remember you telling me about that the last time when you were on for the uh, the political episode. Um, so, so what, what are you, what are you doing for, uh, for the Walker, Texas Ranger? Are you, uh, are you a supporting role? Are you featured extra? What do you, what do you got going on? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a stand in right now and Sweet. looking at later on doing, uh, a small, uh, U5 on that one. But yeah, right now I'm stand in. <laughs> tell us about Chuck Norris. Is he as cool as, uh, he looks? He's not there. I can tell you about, um, Jared Pacaletti. He's there every day. But no, you can skip Chuck, that. That's Chucky okay. boy is not there. Oh man. I want to hear about Jared Pecoletti. No, that's okay. We don't have enough time. We have plenty We're of time. He's a tall film. drink of water. <laughs> He's a tall drink of water. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh. I, I like Jensen Ackles much better. Well, I don't recall who either of those two actors are, so I will take well, your word for it. Well, if you ever watch Supernatural, they're I the did. brothers on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I know exactly well, who you're Jared talking about Well, Jared Padalecki is the one with the longer hair. Uh-huh. Is that um, and Jensen is the cute one. Uh, which one is which one is Dean? <laughs> Dean is Jensen Ackles. Gotcha. There you go. Okay, I remember yeah, that name. But he's not on Walker. Okay, he's not. It's the, not it's the other one. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So what else do you got? But I, I actually have an audition in uh, for Walker as as the uh, the course the driving course instructor. So waiting awesome. to hear back on that one. Very nice. Well, well, good good luck. I don't. I can't remember. Is it is it like in theater? You don't say good luck before someone goes on stage. It's bad luck. Is it for an actor? Is it bad luck to say good luck, or is it acceptable? 
I think you're okay. Okay. Yeah, we All don't right. believe in that. Okay, just making sure. Didn't, Macbeth didn't. says good luck. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, don't say Macbeth. Mr. Macbeth. I, I said Macbeth to a friend one time before he we went on stage, and he tripped oh. walking out over the curtain. So yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, no. Did, super, what, did anyone say anything to you before you hit your head? <laughs> no, no, Gary, and we're not going to talk about that. We don't have enough time. Okay, we don't I'm have sorry. enough time. Yeah, we don't have enough time. Oh, I don't work with curtains. <laughs> yeah, never work with curtains. It'll be curtains for you, Johnny. It'll curtains. be curtains for you, kid. <laughs> curtains for you, Tommy boy. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what else? Have, what have? What else have you guys been doing within uh, the last month or two? Have because uh, I mean, I'm assuming it does sound like things are starting to pick back up for uh, for everybody, at least in the acting side, uh, pretty strongly. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually doing more stuff without Carlton. <laughs> um i i actually liar no i he feels I am betrayed remote filming, Shana, i'm saying i'm just saying I, I am remote filming the pentagon which will be shown in the uk so like i'm on uh i'm on zoom with my director and uh also recording and and we're making changes and everything uh, across the ocean awesome very cool so you're mm-hmm. an international star really yeah, that's not my first time. Um, I, I've been on UK television before. Uh, they've they've got a, a show over there called Vice, which is not like our Vice, but they reenact about to say. like uh, crime stories. Uh-huh. And they came over here and did a story on Clay Toomey, mm-hmm. and I was his pregnant wife, Candace. Oh, okay. and so that that aired on on Channel Four in the UK. Nice, very nice. Uh, we uh, Gary, we have our own resident uh, international film star. It's true. It's true. Uh, yeah. Fashion model. Fashion model. Yeah. Really, when you get right down to yeah. it. Yeah. Gary, uh, out of all people, yeah. got to be in a was it a Swedish clothing uh, commercial? Yeah. Stay for hard. A, stay, for a company called Stay Hard. Twenty seventeen. Twenty sixteen. That was like twenty fifteen, dude. Twenty fifteen. Yeah. When we got that first job. Yeah. It was back in my salad eating days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Carlton, what have you been doing? Okay, so I just wrapped on. Uh, his stretch of Texas ground, uh-huh. which is number two of the series, my uh, stretch of Texas ground. I play um, Deputy uh, David in that one. And in the third installment, I actually become the sheriff. I get the lead in the third movie coming out. So just got the contract for that one. So, uh, but we just got, I just wrapped on that. We had a picture wrap on um, uh, his stretch of Texas ground. Mm-hmm. And then I just wrapped on Triple D's Revenge. I play a racist cop in that. It's going to be a really, um, dirty role but i i really uh i think it's going to be a good overall movie about the gang situation in uh dallas a couple years back and then um i just did a vid chronicle uh like we talked about today i did one where i played a uh also a bad cop and that just hit 3.6 million views in seven days wow so i'm excited about that one now is is this the is this the is this the production itself or just a trailer of that hit the 3.6 million? No, it's a production. They, these are short stories with morals. Okay. And uh, like I said, Sean and I just did one a day right. and, um, and we can shoot those basically in a day, most of the time, like one or two days. And so mine last week uh, went out. It was kind of a black lives matter uh, type of subject matter in yeah. it. And uh, like I said, in about seven days, it hit 3.6 million views and still counting. So pretty excited about that. Nice, man. Uh, so I recall, uh, uh, it, at least for the last few years, I always see you post on Facebook uh, your your in, your interpretation of uh, Buddy the Elf. Uh, when you, I think you you go to like different, uh, I guess what like retirement communities and like uh, like children's hospitals and stuff like that. And you kind of what, what do you what do you do for that? I'm not assuming you're able to do that this year. Um, no, I didn't take uh, Buddy out this year. So yeah, every year I go to the uh, Dale Children's Hospital and visit. Uh, the families that are in the Ronald McDonald house. And I go, uh, I do a, a boat tour, downtown boat tour called uh, okay. the uh, brunch with buddy. <laughs> and, uh, and then I do the downtown pillow fights, which people awesome. really enjoy that. I, I throw a pillow things. at somebody and say pillow fight. <laughs> and, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, you walk uh, up but to this them and say COVID, the, Okay. <laughs> I know it's great. Those are, those are some of the funniest videos. I have a 90 year old grandmother that just kicked my ass, uh, with a, <laughs> with a pillow. So, you know, but, um, yeah, that, that's what I've done in the past. This year, unfortunately, because of COVID, uh, we're not able to go visit hospitals, not able to get in any, anywhere where there's any uh, congregation. Obviously, nursing homes are out. So, yeah, but he's been kind of just um, kind of like an elf on a shelf this year. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> just sitting there with nothing to do. Well, uh, that's... That, that's that oh that's that that's a shame man but well at least uh at least hopefully you'll be able to uh get to do it next year that's for sure 
That's for sure. Because I'm hoping so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I that actually reminds me of something I was cast in but didn't get to do this year because uh, it, it was crazy. Um, I was I was going to be Sally uh-huh. from Peanuts. Nightmare Before Christmas uh, for nice. um, an interactive experience mm-hmm. that that actually had people from Disney there uh, working with us. So it, it, it's it was going to be at the Toyota Music Factory mm-hmm. in the Dallas area. And it was, it was, I mean, they've been planning it for three years, but unfortunately we were not able to open. So maybe we'll be able to next year. Okay. Well, I, I hope so too. That would, that would be, that would be fantastic, man. God, it's just, it, it is frustrating yeah. how, how much is shut down right now because of COVID, but hopefully we're. Yeah. Uh, another thing that Shauna does every year, Shauna does the, uh, the, uh, light show over at, um, Grand Prairie prairie lights and this year got canceled as well yeah and she does a live show there interactive show every year uh-huh. yeah I, I'm, I'm really bummed about that one too because i that has been so so much fun and and it's it's you know it's geared, geared toward you know five and under but even I liked o- it. yeah even older kids really have enjoyed it like last year i got abducted by an alien and had to teach him all about christmas so <laughs> <laughs> No, no, there wasn't enough probing for me in that show, but I did enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, you you guys and and your threesomes and probing, I'm sure it all goes together. So, <laughs> uh, so don't I, give all of our secrets away. <laughs> Good lord. I got, I got, I got, I got to give props when they're due. Um, so I, I have to ask, and this is this is for. Uh, so it was super glad you guys could could join us again. Uh, and just to switch to change gears here, I wanted I want to chat about really quick. Out of this group, on a scale of one to absolutely over the top insane, how are you guys set for Christmas? How are you guys? How big of fans of Christmas are you guys? I just, I just want to know everybody's personal preference. I myself, I consider myself like a nine, close to over the top ten, but that's just me. Um, Gary, where are you at? Uh, for Christmas, I would say that uh, I'm, I'm normally an eight. Like I, Christmas is uh, that's higher than I was thinking. Cool. Yeah, All right. Christmas awesome. is certainly one of my favorite holidays. Um, uh, I really suck at actually putting up any Christmas decorations or <laughs> doing anything like that. Like, uh, I still need to get my tree up. Uh, but I do have Christmas lights up at my house. They've been up for like five years, though. But, you know so, what? They're still straight. up, though. They have not come down They have not come down. Yes. In fact, whenever the the strands used to go out, we would change them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, cause get, <laughs> you, Christmas, not just one day a year. You got to keep it all the time. 365 or 366. As Bill Murray said in Scrooge. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I know. I really like Christmas. Um, I just, I, uh, uh, need to do better about uh, getting stuff oh, out. You but, get busy. It's understandable yeah. if you're busy with everyday life. It's, yeah. you know, especially if like, if you don't have, like, if you don't have kids, I can, I can yeah. assume it's probably a lot. It's just, it's more different. Yeah. You know, if you don't have a bunch of people coming over to your house, like mm-hmm. you're the only one that really gets to see it or you and your significant yeah. other and, or whatever. And it's just, it's just really sad to just put up Christmas lights and decorations for yourself. <laughs> that would make me want to blow my brains out more than a, a normal day. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, there you go. See, you like, like I told everybody, this is why our viewers tune in. Yeah. I don't give a flick. We yeah. give them the in depth, the, the nitty gritty, the nitty gritty. Uh, for those of you listening, that was Gary's cry for help. It was, so. it was, and no one will answer it. <laughs> the one, okay, and the one, the one place you'll hear it on uh, on live air. Uh, Neil, how about you? I would say usually I'm about a seven or eight getting pumped for Christmas, but oh. this year it's just, it's snuck up on me and I have not done anything to prepare. I think it's just been harder. Just you know, like we were talking about, every, everybody's just inside. And, you know, we went to the trail of lights last night. Um, Vanessa and I did, and it was drive through this year. And I mean, we got through the entire thing in not even half an hour and it just wasn't the same. Like we got done and she looks at me and she goes, is that it? And I'm like, that's the normal walk. You just we're in a car going five miles and an hour. Do, so we'll do I'm donuts around sure the when it first opened years ago, it was drive through, wasn't it? I've never, I'm pretty sure it's always been a walk-through. I, yeah, I've I never, don't ever I've never remember drive-thru. being drive through. Yeah. Um, but, but that's good. No, that's good. I, I thought, I, I thought, you, I didn't know you guys were so, so into the holiday as much. Um, gosh, Shauna, what about you? Where are you at with the whole Christmas spirit? I'm a 10. Oh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> this year I'm like a four because mm. mostly because we were going to be moving and I gave all my stuff away uh-huh. and I haven't um, oh, purchased any more Christmas stuff. So I have no decorations up 
whatsoever this year. No. Uh, the kids and I are not going to have a tree. We're just going to be like, okay, hey, it's Christmas. Here's your gifts, and uh, have fun with that. Doop to do. So <laughs> <laughs> you could get one of those like uh, those little Charlie Brown Christmas trees. You know, you can just, just. I don't even want to go to that effort right now. <laughs> <laughs> because if for for one thing, I I did I did all of our shopping, <clears throat> every bit of it last Monday, mm -hmm. and so I I went online, I ordered everybody's stuff, and it's all coming on different days. So some of the stuff won't even be here in, uh, until after Christmas. So you know, it is what it is. You know, it's it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Uh, we'll just celebrate Christmas for a while, I guess. Yeah, I mean, y y if you wanted, you could always get like a fern, like put like a light on that. A fern, a fern. We could, or like just a little, like a little potted plant, a little rose. It's true. Yeah. yeah, wouldn't be very festive. You get a little tiny bonsai cedar you, tree. Maybe I'll get a poinsettia. You could get and, a poinsettia. And just use that That's as a pretty tree good. substitute. Yeah. That's better than what Gary's got. Gary's got just like this little, this little plastic tree that somewhat it's, lights it's up. Pre -lit. Yeah, <laughs> it's pre-lit. I've got like four ornaments on it. You so it's, it's. I think wonderful. half of them were gifts from me. Possibly, possibly. <laughs> but hey, it's there. <laughs> Carlton, where are you at on the, the Christmas spirit spectrum? I'm kind of like Sean. I normally attend. It's my favorite okay. time of year. I oh, yeah. love it. I love going out and playing uh, piano for people. I, I usually visit the nursing homes and do uh, do the piano. We talked about Buddy. I mean, it's it's you know in my blood. I love it. And this year, I don't even know what day is it. December the uh, 12th, 11th, whatever it is. Um, I have no tree up. I have... Mm. Um, Nothing really, you know, to, to celebrate with because I'm just like, you know what? My norm to, this time of year is going out and bringing other people the Christmas spirit. Sure. And since I can't do that, I can't quite catch that that spirit this year. So I don't know. Yeah. Just just not feeling it. COVID's kind of kind of kick Christmas in a different direction this that's year. That's right. It certainly put a damper on it. That's a uh, that's for sure. I, I kind of felt that way with with Halloween this year. I mean, typically Christmas is always above Halloween for me by by a notch. But uh, yeah, I was just I was traveling for so many shoots this year. Just uh, by the time I came back, I was like, well, I'm not really going to go to a party. I mean, what's what's the point in dressing up? So, all right, <laughs> go hang out. With, like, well, Halloween was super awesome for us, though. But oh, I'm a haunted it? house actor. You, you did. You, <laughs> you did a what? With, you guys went to a haunted house, did you say? No, I'm I am a haunted house actor. Oh, okay. For, gotcha. for the the largest walk through haunted house in the world. Nice. <laughs> so we we still made it happen. Is this, uh, is, is, so is this, this is in Dallas too? It's in Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. What's, uh, yep. what's that called? I don't think, I don't think I've been to that one. Yeah. It's I've been cutting, to a cutting of edge. Cutting edge. Okay. I'll just look it up. Yeah. Cutting edge haunted house. Nice. Scare for a cure. Yeah. And we, we were COVID compliant and everything. Awesome. We still had tons of people coming through. There, there's a lot of them that are still open. There's one, uh, that's out in Bastrop, a little east of Austin. Um, and, they actually do, they have like, everything's outside and they, they build the little houses and whatnot. And they, no, we're, we're all, we're all inside though. Well, and and yeah. pe people come through our different sets and everything, but like everybody is masked and like we were masked under everything else too. Oh my too. God, that had to be hot. That had to be just it suffocating. Was. <laughs> it, it was, it was very much suffocating, but they also provided us with the 3D brackets that you can put uh -huh. in, under your mask so we could breathe. Uh -huh. So I, I use that every day when I go to my regular job and everything, too. So I'm like, I have a 3D bracket. Yes, I can breathe. <laughs> I got to give you guys something. I think you can just have you passing out yes. in front of people because then they'll really be fucking scared. They're like, is this part of the act? <laughs> is, exactly. is this, does this person need to go to the ER? Anybody? Oh, <laughs> uh, so let's dive in. Let, let's 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 uh, let's dive in here. Um, best Christmas movies of all time. These can just be personal favorites. Um I just want to I want to hear from everybody really quick what classics for them have lasted the test of time the ones that still wow us to this day um, when you if you had one Christmas movie to watch on Christmas Eve you can only watch one what would it be uh, Neil let's start with you I mean I'm probably gonna steal someone's thunder here but for me it's not Christmas unless I see a Christmas story it's just a classic story I want to get that Red Rider BB gun. That's my movie. It's on twenty four hours a day for about a week straight. I'm gonna watch it at least three times. I, th I thought I thought Lethal Weapon was your was your Christmas go to. It is, but to, like that's my that's my Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. But like 
to be in the spirit of Christmas, it's got to be a Christmas story. Okay, I got you. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, let's let's jumble it up. Uh, Sean, what about you? Which which one do you have to watch? To Mine just... is also a Christmas story to the point a where a few years ago, my kids hid the DVD and the Blu-ray because I would play it just randomly <laughs> throughout the year, too. Just on loop. <laughs> it's a great yeah. movie. It is a good I movie. I don't, Christmas I don't blame story. you. <laughs> it's like, you shoot your eye out, kid. Fudge. I don't think he actually said fudge in that scene. No, no. I think he was a plus 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 plus. plus, plus. <laughs> Ralphie wins best kid of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Carlton, what about you? Well, you should have mixed up a little more. I'm I'm going to say Christmas Story, Ooh. and uh, it's it's I, it's I'm a classic, man. Not, it's on the Mel Have I got the whole thing? I know I have got the whole thing memorized, but um, I do have the lamp. I have the yes, leg lamp, yes. and I have the leg ornament, and I have so many of these things from that uh, movie that it's not even funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 my kids uh, continue to know that I do that. So every year I get a Christmas story ornament from my kids. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's just my 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 favorite movie. I mean, I watch it anytime, day or night, and laugh every single time I watch it. So so you three all picked a Christmas story. What yep. uh, is y'all's favorite line from that movie? Good question. Hmm. Favorite line. You'll shoot your eye out, maybe? I don't know. It's okay. certainly the most I don't know. He had line. yellow eyes. Yellow eyes. So help me God, That's yellow right. eyes. <laughs> don't forget to drink your Ovaltine. <laughs> Ovaltine? <laughs> What's that code for? <laughs> I, I also love right. it how he just described the the bully. I forgot his name, the redheaded kid that mm-hmm. you're talking about with the yellow eyes. Yeah. And he's just he's just a Scott stri- Farkas. Yeah, Scott Farkas. That's right. And he's such a wussy. Uh, like um, Scott Farkas. There's yeah. there is no rhyme or reason to why Ralphie should have beaten this kid up. He's almost three times his size, probably five years older, mm-hmm. and he just he just thumps him. Well, as uh, <laughs> President Eisenhower said, it's not the size of the dog in the fight; it's the size of the fight in the dog. I think Snoop Dogg said that, Gary. Okay. I don't. <laughs> maybe. I mean, it's possible. Does Snoop maybe Dogg like point. Dwight Eisenhower? I have no idea. Okay. I know he's, he's on the Mount Rushmore for, for smoking weed. Yeah. If there was a Mount Rushmore of that interview with cannabis. Him and, uh, you're saying he's always stoned? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Boom. Uh, Can you add that sound effect in, Gary? Why don't, why don't I we can, add that in a post? <laughs> Unless you have it queued up right now. Mm, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gary, how about you? Where are you at? You going to keep the train uh, keep the train rolling? Uh, no, I'm going to uh, going to say that uh, for me, like the, the best Christmas movie is um, It's a Wonderful Life. I think that to me is the seminal classic Solid Christmas choice. movie. Solid choice. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's the one I... Uh, now, don't get me wrong. I love a Christmas story and a lot of other Christmas movies, but it's not uh, it's not Christmas till you watch It's a Wonderful Life on Christmas Eve. Absolutely, I I think that for me, It's a Wonderful Life is always mm-hmm. since I was a kid. I've always watched it every Christmas Eve, no matter where I'm at. I always watch It's a Wonderful Life, so I can't say that's the first one that I watched to get me in the spirit because it's the one that I end Christmas right the season with. It's the money shot for you. It, yeah, I mean, it's only like. 65 years old, so... Oh, it's older it than that. What's it like? The test of time. 39? Pretty sure 40? it's way older than that. <laughs> yeah, it's like 70-something at this point. Yeah. And old, No, older than that. You said 39, yeah. 80 years almost. I think it's like 45 or 46. Hmm. Anyways... While back, um, for me, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm still gonna have to say Elf. That's the one that I always open every Christmas with, uh, since I was a, since I was a teenager and, and saw that. Um, you know, honestly, I was thinking about that. As far as actors who get into the holiday season and they do holiday classics, Will, Will Ferrell, to my knowledge, is the only one with multiple. As far as Christmas goes, he's got Elf, um, and then Daddy's Home too, huh? Anybody? Uh, oh, you love that movie. Come uh, on. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Marky Mark? No. Marky Mark uh, was in uh, uh, Adam Sandler only had eight crazy nights. Is Ma- that- Macaulay Culkin was in two Christmas oh, movies. Oh, come on. But, and we're going to, I'm going to get into Home Alone 2 in a second. Oh, with good. Most I overrated, hope you get so. into it. All right. I hope we're, you get deep into it. And by the way, Neil, what is up you with all these right. sexual 19, innuendos tonight? What are you 1946. What? It's a wonderful life. Good job. What? All right. All right, <laughs> 75, 74 years, whatever. Uh, <laughs> all right, so if we had to pick, uh-huh. let's try to get a consensus agreement amongst the panel 
the Mount Rushmore, the upper echelon for Christmas movies. You get four Christmas movies. What is up there? The top four. The one when you say Christmas, everybody thinks of these four. I'm going to start off and say A Christmas Story is going to be up there. I mean, three of the yeah. five of us just, okay. just mentioned it. Yeah. Um, anybody yeah. disagree with Elf? That? Elf. I, I, no. I, I would agree with Elf as I would, well. I would disagree with Elf. Oh, my God. Get out of here. You and I don't think Elf would be top four. Nope. Easily. Easily not. No. Carlton, I'm with you, man. No. I'm with you. And Neil, Neil yeah, here. I think, I think it's got to be. I, 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 Come on. There's so many better movies than Elf. Oh, right. Think of Miracle Christ. on 34th Street. Miracle on 34th Street, the one? original. A Charlie Brown Christmas. No, no shit. Yes. Hang on. I want I want to. I want to. I want to. Let's 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 talk about this real quick. I want to exclude okay. for this purpose. I want to exclude the short films. I want to okay. exclude the initial animated uh, Grinch Old, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Okay. Uh, same thing. Charlie Brown Christmas. I want to just do feature films for a second because you're right. If we had to go for both of those, would probably be mm -hmm. on it. So let's stick with let, let's stick with feature films. Um, Neil, so I know you've got another one probably queued up. What what else are you thinking? I mean, just for me, movies better than that, better than Elfer, Trading Places. Uh, I probably. I don't know if that's the quintessential Christmas movie, though. It is a great movie. But I think it's better than Elf. I don't think Elf is Mount Rushmore worthy. Elf. It's funny. It's great. But I don't think it's Mount it's Rushmore. It stood the test of time. That's the Absolutely. number one costume every year. Hell yeah. People love that costume. S speak it, Carlton. Mm. Speak that truth. <laughs> Lies. Okay, my, my two other ones. I'm going to throw two other yeah, ones out at you. George C. George C. Scott's version of A Christmas Carol. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's certainly in the mix. Okay. I it's up, it's up there. It's, it's a classic. I love that one. And um, I'm going to say the old original with Danny Kay, the Holiday Inn, which White okay. Christmas was written for. Right, 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 right. Okay. I've never even seen that movie. White Christmas? <laughs> she is younger than all of us combined. <laughs> <laughs> all she of us is combined. younger than all of us combined. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> it's okay. Is People White Christmas the one with Bing Crosby? Yes, places. that's right. Yeah. And yes, White Christmas is the one with Bing Crosby, yeah. I would I would th I would throw white I would throw white Christmas into that into that mix. Um, I throw National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation in there. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think those are all. I think I, I think yeah. I think that's that's a good a good mix, Gary. Or any of that where you think we're leaving out? Uh, well, well, for me, um, it's a Wonderful Life would be one of them. Sure. Uh, sure. A Christmas Story would be another one. Uh, the Muppets Christmas Carol, I think, is better than the George C. Scott one. Although I love that's George the C. nostalgia Scott. factor. <laughs> that's the nostalgia factor speaking through. I love that I, one too. That's one of my still as okay. an adult. All right. Like I so like I was on uh, our friend Ian Webb's podcast. So movie so bad they're good earlier, and we did the Power Rangers movie from '95. Right for an episode today. Now that's a nostalgia one, but that's the Muppets one. Christmas one is still a good movie. It's better than the Power Rangers 95 version for sure, and I love watching both of them. I don't know if I'd put that in the top four of all time, though. I, I For me, I would, yeah. Okay. And uh, my fourth one was going to be How the Grinch Stole Christmas, but then you were like, no no cartoons. I am a bah humbug, bitch. Yeah. Okay? All right, yep. I'm going to Scrooge all the yeah. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. you know. Or just, what about Scrooged? Scrooge. The Bill Murray one. Uh, Scrooge is really great. Uh, that's kind of really close to a Christmas carol, though. It's based off of a christmas carol and right. it's wonderful life so so i mean like I, I feel like that'd be cheating that'd be putting like john adams and john quincy adams on mount rushmore you just you don't do it what the hell did john quincy adams even do you know he was, always overshadowed by his father well i mean you know logger there you go okay. boom there you go yep up in me <laughs> uh all right so let's so all right so let's break this down real quick let's break okay. this down here uh we've got a, i think Everybody had already agreed on a Christmas story, so that's 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 one head. That's that's taking the place Boom, of up there. George Washington's head up on on Mount Rushmore there. Uh, Boom, right there. That's right. Boom. Boom. All right. Who's taking the spot of uh, Abe Lincoln? It's a Wonderful Life. Wonderful Life. Uh, all right. I'll I'll say yes to that. Uh, Sean and Carlton. What about you guys? Do you guys think that makes the cut for top four of all time? Yeah, it's it's up there for sure. I'm I'm not really a fan of it, but most people are, so I'll say sure. Okay, all right, and I I, I respect you catering to the masses. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, third one, who's taking the place of uh, a TJ? The Muppets Christmas Carol. No, Gary. Yep. I'm not. I'm Muppets not voting yes with you on Muppets Carol. Christmas Carol, dude. <laughs> yeah, I need two more votes. Somebody vote with me. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna vote. say no for Muppets. I'm gonna say no for Muppets. You let me down. I'm still throwing up Elf in there. I, hey, no for Elf. All right, yeah, we're moving past Muppets Christmas Carol. Nobody. 
It's a good movie, Gary. I agree with you. I love it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. Right. I'm. I'm. I'm on board with Carlton on this one. I. I say Elf's in that top nope. four. No, not Elf. <laughs> Neil, I'm assuming you're going no too. Go put that. Elf That's gonna be a no. Shelf. Shelf. Okay, Shauna, you're the you're the you're the deciding vote here. Well, it would be a yes. Oh yeah. How sweet it is. Wait a minute. How sweet it is, boys. No. <laughs> yeah, that's nope. you're you're outvoted. Well, it's three to two, so that's we win. Well, two of like the permanent panelists said no. It doesn't matter. Oh it does, no, we're not oh. playing that fucking game. Get the hell out of here, dude. Get off your high horse. Yes, folks only count over half, right? <laughs> it's, not, it's not how we're doing this. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's three places taken. Three places taken. All right. All right. I and what's I will let, I, I, since since Neil and Gary, since you guys didn't get your way on the third one, I will let you guys go ahead. Why don't you suggest a throw a fourth one out there that you think might uh, make it up to the top? Go we ahead, got, Neil. We had a Miracle on Thirty Four. I mean, we had, I think I think National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation ranks up there. That is a fucking good one. You know, I know we debated about it last time, but I really I think Die Hard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know that I love Die Hard, and you know that I have to watch it every Christmas. But it's not a Christmas movie. Christmas movie. It's not a Christmas, it's not a Christmas movie. It's not a Christmas movie. It's not. Mm. I agree. It's not. It's, not it's a, a great movie. fucking movie. Mm. I'm not saying it's not. And oh, I love awesome movie. Yeah. Mm. Oh fuck yeah. Oh yeah. Love to watch it in December. But not a Christmas. <laughs> mm. Christmas movie, man. It's... You could place it on any other day, on any other holiday throughout the year, and it would still be okay. the same movie. All right. It's the ultimate Christmas movie, but that's all right. <laughs> Just, we'll have an entire podcast just, just dedicated to stand die hard. there in your wrongness and be wrong. Well, I'm sitting in my As wrongness. Bartlett and said one time. That's true. He did. He did say that. Let's just do an episode on West Wing. That would be great. Why don't we do that? Well, oh my at god. At some point, maybe we will. Uh, <laughs> we could get Martin Sheen on. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, Carlton, you met him, didn't you? You maybe put in a good word for us. Maybe get him on the get him on the show. We could have a, a glass of brandy with Martin Sheen and a cup of coffee with John Lovitz. With John Lovitz. Uh, okay, well, let's let's pass it around. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Shauna, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and Chevy Chase is a cool guy. I've actually snowshoed up to his property in Colorado. Really? So yeah. It, yep. Did you get it? Did you get a chance to meet him? I I've I've never met the guy. I just read stories about him being a huge asshole and just a big dick. Um, I don't know how accurate it is. Never met him. Oh, interviews I've seen with him are um, always fine. So what did you He think? actually, he was not home. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're stalking him. Okay. All right. That's cool. No, I just needed to know that. Stalking in snowshoes. It's snowshoes, apparently. Nothing like a little Christmas stalking. <laughs> uh, I was pregnant and I wasn't allowed to go on the lift, so I had to nice. snowshoe somewhere else. <laughs> oh, no, that's that, that's fantastic. It would have been great if you were stalking him. I would have I would have laughed even harder. Um <laughs> I want a snowshoe stalker. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. Are you kidding me? How much do I have to pay for oh that? My God, my <laughs> memoirs have a whole new chapter. <laughs> memoirs by Carlton. Uh, the snowshoe stalker. Snowshoe stalker. God, that sounds like a horrible B-rated it horror rolls film. Off. Yeah, <laughs> we're filming that. We're making that movie. Is, is that the is that the is that the Tim Allen film Neil where he plays the serial killer? Yes, where he kills the man on the roof and steals his identity. <laughs> yes, I still wait. That. I wanted to be the snowshoer though. <laughs> Well, you you can. You just have to. You just have to imitate Tim Allen now. Oh, okay, I can do that. Okay, yeah, I bet you could. Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> arr, arr, arr. Arr, I'm Tim Allen, Allen matey. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, that's another one we forgot. The Santa Claus. That was Claus. all too. That wasn't my voice at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was me. Totally me. Okay, uh, Carlton, what do you think? National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Would that would that round out your top four? Mm, let me think. Oh man. It's good. It's good. It's a solid one. I, um, I still like your original one. Of solid. Them. Is it solid? Do we, let me think of, let me think of, um, okay. No, a couple lines from it. Yeah, definitely. You know, okay. Uh, what have we got there? Um, I guess, I guess, yeah, you know, it's every year it's lasted for many years. It's still out. It's, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, sure. Why not? That's right. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's gone through the test of time and, and that's where we're at. Uh, um, and Neil, you you already on that bandwagon, and Gary. Well, it's certainly a very American Christmas movie. All of the movies we've talked about have been American Christmas movies. Well, like <laughs> like a Christmas Carol. Not many Russian Christmas movies that come to mind. <laughs> There's a couple Bulgarian ones, but you know, <laughs> yeah, Bon Appetit. No, that's Romania, and we're not same, doing that anymore. Same. 
Eastern Bloc, you oh, know. For God's sake, just. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'm fine with National Lampoons. I think that that's a, a nice mix. Okay. With the. Uh, I think we've, the comedy. we've. I think we've covered pretty much every era with that four. With that Mount Rushmore, I think we've covered every era since the late 1930s. So, okay, kudos. It's Wonderful Life. We didn't really have anything. I guess not really the 50s. Yeah, which Um, would have been, I guess, White Christmas, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, close enough. Christmas Story, that was 70s, right? Um, Or was that early 80s? Uh, I think it's early 80s. I think it was 81. Yeah, I was going to say National Lampoon was 88? Was it that late? Something like that. Something around that. Um, So, yeah, you got those two, and then Elf was the early 2000s. So, all right, that's the Mount Rushmore from the panel this week on I Don't Give a Flick. Elf. It's a Wonderful Life, A Christmas Story, and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Uh, and there is an asterisk by Elf, but there's no that's ast- okay. There's no, there's no asterisk. Oh, my I gosh. Mean, there's no asterisk. There's, 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 there's no asterisk. <laughs> you guys lost, and you're just but sore about the loss. There's an asterisk by it. That's fine. <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's move on to one of my... F- cotton-headed ninny muggins. Cotton, that's, you sit on a throne of lies. <laughs> I don't know. Is that from a terrible movie or something? Well, it's from the one I'm of the greatest a movie that's on the Mount Rushmore of Christmas films. Oh, it's oh, called Elf. It, Maybe oh, heard the one it with the asterisk by it. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. The asterisk. Yeah. Not asterisk. There's an S in it before the K. You could say asterisk because it's fine. I, guess, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say any. You can mispronounce anything you want. I that's true. Yeah. Like saying like uh, cotton and mi- mini Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like mispronouncing Christmas Carol as Elf. That's fine. You know. Yeah, mispronouncing yeah. that. Yeah. Completely different spelling, a completely different film. Let's jump over to uh, just just bad Christmas movies. We don't have to go to a Mount Rushmore bad Christmas movies on this one. Uh, I just want to know <laughs> what everyone's what everyone's thought process is on uh, the worst Christmas films of all time. We'll get to most overrated in a second. Um, there, there's got to be, and I, I'm not going to exclude any Lifetime or Hallmark movies you may have seen if you. I mean, for and for all I know, oh, Carlton God. and Shauna, you guys might have been in a couple. I I, I don't know. Um, I, I I did I did one. I did one. Yes. Yeah, I know. My my a, fr- a friend of mine who works a lot like you guys. He's he was in one a couple months ago. So, um, sorry, Shauna, go ahead. No, I, I I was just telling you, I have not done any of those movies, but I was gonna say any of those movies would be on on the worst list. <laughs> Let's just call every lifetime Hallmark film lot. is a piece of is a piece of flaming poop. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, let's just let's call a spade a spade here. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so I won't exclude those. Um, and if you have any really quick side note, have you guys seen the trailer for the newest Lifetime movie coming out? A recipe for seduction starring Mario Lopez as Colonel Sanders presented by yeah, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I have so seen the preview for that. I thought that was a like, what the actual hell? It's a thing. <laughs> it's a 15-minute short film, and that's that's literally, literally, Mario Lopez is, is the personal chef for some rich family, falls in love with the daughter, they end up boning, and the boyfriend of the daughter and the mother end up tying up Mario Lopez, and they, like, torture him, apparently. And that's the movie. Well, he gave her the 13 like time, spices, though. so. Where, where does Colonel <laughs> Sanders come into play? It's it's It talks about him before KFC got big, but it doesn't make sense because wouldn't he have to be alive to create KFC? Like, how they can't... So, like, I, I mean, obviously the movie is... Oh, they're it's saying... It's not that, a biography. Okay, it's not a biopic. They're saying I mean, Colonel Sanders did this, was he tortured. Is correct. And he, then... It is and, Colonel Sanders. Mario Lopez is supposed to be... You knew Mario Lopez, right? The guy from Saved by the Bell who played uh-huh. S- uh, Slater. Yeah. Um, A.C. Slater. A.C. Slater. Um, God, every every person from the cast of Saved by the Bell has just gone, done nothing but... Go, they've gone downhill. Every one of them. Yeah. Dustin Diamond had that long career in porn. Um, the guy that played Screech. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic. Um, but it looks horrible. And oh, Christmas, Johnny Chris. That's right. Christmas porn hey, with It's screech. coming out tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Time. So if anybody wants to watch it, uh, come on over. We'll watch it together because I'm actually going to I'm going to watch it. I'm not watching to. Colonel Sanders have, porn with I you. I have to. This movie looks that would be horrible. too foul. Oh, God. Uh, like poultry jokes to get your get, get your, your feathers running. up. Oh God! All right, mm. moving on. Mm. I, I I opened a can of worms that I, I it's gonna be mm. hard to close. Mm. Uh, so yeah, not gotta wing it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Drum roll. No. Oh, 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 right. We're, <laughs> that's why people tune in for the dad jokes because mm. they are eggs. <laughs> that was a reach. 
That was not a reach. No, it was, it was a reach. Chickens lay eggs. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. So not excluding any of those if you can remember an actual name, <laughs> um, but just just movies that fell absolutely short uh, completely there. Uh, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and start this one off because this this one I, 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 have to, I have to get off my chest. Uh, Christmas with the Cranks. I don't know how many. Of you Tim guys have Allen actually, at his worst. At his worst, and I love Tim Allen. I love Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, I love Dan Aykroyd, and it's so bad to throw him into this horrible movie. It it just it took a really fun cast of characters and and group of actors and a story that could have potentially been really entertaining and heartfelt, and they made it. I normally love really just it, it was kind of crass for a family film. I love movies like that, but it just it just combining the two didn't work for me i don't know i mm-hmm. felt kind of filthy after watching it i don't know i just i don't know it was just me um i don't know have any of you guys not seen that one i wish i could say I mean, yes I try no, every I day to forget that one does that count <laughs> yeah a little bit a little bit i guess um that's my one to throw into the ringer um uh, we'll, we'll we'll open this up to anybody on the panel who's got one i mean for me I love Danny DeVito and I love Matthew Broderick, but I cannot stand Deck the Halls. Oh, I didn't actually see that one, oddly enough. That's the one where the neighbors across the street are battling and Danny DeVito ends up lighting up his house that could be seen from space. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I just could not get into is it. Is that the one that are, are they are they fighting for prize money? There's like a prize for like the best decorated house on the block or something? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's like a neighborhood. Gotcha. It's like Best a homeowners association contest or something. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. I. I. I'll. I'll take your word for that one because I've. Hell. I've. I've only seen the previews for it like twice. And that was a while back. Uh, Gary, mm. where are you at? Uh. Well, actually. Um. I had put Elf on this list. Oh, uh, just because it's just. <laughs> you could have just saved it for oh most my overrated. God. Well, I, I mean, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's the most overrated, but like you know, it's just. Um. Uh, it's I, on well, the Mount may, Rushmore may, Christmas may, films. Maybe it is so overrated. I, I, I had no idea there was so much love and support for this movie. Have you been living under a rock for the last 15 years? I or try, like, I'm trying to, to I, avoid, I, avoid the elf. <laughs> avoid the noise. Do you always enjoy a glass of Haterade with this show? Yeah, yes. Gary. Actually, yeah, that's the only thing that keeps me going, really. Gary, you're just such a hateful Haterade individual. and PCP. Yeah. <laughs> Get pumped. All right, uh, you know... You know yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm just, like, you know, I, I, I think that. That's... So you think it's an overrated Christmas film. You just think it's bad. Yeah. I, I just I think it's. Why? Wow. Why? I, I you, think it's and you like a lot of Will Ferrell movies, which surprises yeah. the hell out of me. Yeah. Um, like Talladega Nights, I thought was great. You love the other guys. The other you guys was great. Time. Yeah. Got... So why? The guys is why great. did you think it was crap? What about it? Did you not like? I, mean, I, I just thought the the humor for me didn't land very well. Um, Like when you what was the. Fuzzy headed ninny poop. What was the the saying? Cotton headed ninny muggins. Yeah, like you know, it just it just it just seemed just stupid. It's to a me. family movie. Yeah, it's a. I mean, you know, yeah, not enough gratuitous sex for you. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted not. to see Will Ferrell's naked body. Is that yeah. too much to ask? Yeah. Hey, look, if I can handle if I can handle Tommy Wiseau's naked ass, then I can probably handle Will Ferrell's hairy one. Uh, just saying. He does have like that big cut. I, I I don't know if that's like an appendectomy, like on his uh, Will Ferrell or Tommy Wiseau. Will Ferrell. Um, he does. I don't yeah. think I've ever noticed that. Yeah, and it, like, I, it's like I think it was an appendectomy because oh, okay. like one of those old school ones where they had to like really dig into you. Really? Um, but yeah. Okay. That that's the that's part of his body. I don't know why we're talking about. I don't this. know. You're the one that started. <laughs> I mean, hey, we talked about a recipe for seduction, so there you go. nothing's off limits here. Uh, Who knows what we're cooking up? God, shut the fuck up! I, I should have not said anything. I should have not said anything. Uh, I you put you so I guess, uh, Carlson. What about you? Uh, what any 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 movies that pop into your head that are just? They're... I'm gonna I'm gonna give you uh, two that end with three. Oh, My first okay. one is uh, Santa Claus three. Oh, perfect. The Santa Claus oh, three the... with uh, that's Tim Allen. Oh, sure. Uh, God, I hate that movie. Yeah, should have stopped at uh, one, but uh, yeah. they don't ever know when to. True. And uh, H- Home Alone three. Mm, yeah, oh, I love that as a kid. Didn't they make a fourth one? They did. It was like just in like a house, like just a normal kind of house. I can't remember. Um, what didn't you like about the the Home Alone three though? I just thought it was a, the the first one was good. The second one was a little bit of a stretch, but the third one, like <laughs> I said, it was it was not uh, not good. I didn't I didn't enjoy it at all. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I think any time that you have a part that's played by um, an actor like Macaulay Culkin or just, you know, an actor that is re- that, that originates the part um, and then you have to recast it because he's too old to play the part, I, I think you right. really lose a lot of, uh, you know, what that movie is supposed to be. I mean, that should be a, a hint to you, like, maybe we shouldn't do this anymore. Um, it does remind me of that. Uh, did you ever watch that show, The Critic? It was a cartoon from yes. the early 90s. Yeah. With uh, John Lovitz? With John Lovitz, yes. Um, yep, yeah, John Lovitz, and yeah. And uh, he was like... Great show. Yeah, he was talking about like Home Alone 6 coming out, and he's like, we left <laughs> Kevin at home, and he's only 27. And it cuts <laughs> cuts him, he's got like a like a 5 o'clock shadow, he's smoking, he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, John Lovitz. You are a genius. Please have a cup of coffee with John. John Lovitz, please come on this show. <laughs> please come on the show and have a cup of coffee with us. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Carlton. Was it? Was that? Was that your last one? The last one. Yeah, the the, the, the two threes for me. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I first one. I yeah, first one. I agree with you for sure. Uh, Sean, what about you? Um, the only one that comes to mind right now is. Christmas Town, uh-huh. and it's either one of those Lifetime movies or ABC Family or something okay. like that. But you know, there's it's a boy meets girl kind of <clears throat> um, oh movie, and and the traveler stumbles across this town that's all about Christmas and blah blah blah, and you know, of course, falls in love and winds sure. up moving into the town, and it's a bunch of hokiness. Oh God. So so basically, like every Lifetime and Hallmark movie ever made, perfect. Exactly, yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah. love it. <laughs> There's only one script Lifetime ever follows. They just change the names. So. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Change the names of the characters and and the title. Perfect. Uh, so, really quick, since since Gary, I want to go back to what Gary's, you know, harping on Elf so much. Um, what makes a classic Christmas film? Before we get in the most overrated, what makes what are the elements? or the variables that a Christmas film needs to have to be a classic film that stands the test of time. And Gary, I'm going to point this to you to start out okay. because you're the one that I, is disagreeing with the majority. You know, of and like, I think that um, <laughs> it's whatever, you know, your family and your like traditions say. So if okay. you really like Elf, then that's a great Christmas movie for you. I don't think it's, as great of a Christmas movie, and that's fine. And that's fine. But mm. like, I think You're that wrong, it's okay. it, it's, uh, it's got to be a movie that, for for lack of a better term, sort of inspires warmth inside you and makes you feel like th- these are the holidays. And like you know, okay. you know, if, if when you watch Elf, you feel like you feel like like that. Hey, this is the Christmas time. That's great, you know. And you know, if you watch uh, It's a Wonderful Life, and you feel that. You know, just sort of the memories for, for me, it's like the memories of uh, childhood and what it was like around Christmas time. You know, okay. um, that's I guess that's my opinion. So I, I think that okay. it's kind of fluid for each of us. I, I think as long as it does that, though, um, for you, then, you know, that's that's what a great Christmas movie does. OK, so you're of you're of the opinion that a Christmas movie is always going to be what makes a classic Christmas movie is always going to be subjective and there's no universal equation or formula to what makes a good one yeah i think so i i think that like it's a wonderful life is considered a classic because for everybody or for at least the vast majority of society people get that you know feel that way because it's just been so ingrained in our culture like you you know you watch it's a wonderful life around christmas or um, a christmas story you know you watch tnt you watch that you know it's on 24 hours a day so like at some point of the day you're going to watch that movie with your family so I think right. that's kind of the measure in my mind. Yeah. Uh, and I want to, I want, I do, I want to pose the same question to, uh, uh, to you guys, Shauna and, and Carlton, um, <clears throat> especially since you guys, since you guys both have kids, um, for you, does, does a classic Christmas movie, does it mean a movie you can sit down and watch with the entire family or are there, you know, universal widespread variables that, um, that can be implemented into, Children, family, and like adult movies because there's adult Christmas movies. There's Bad, Bad Santa. Santa, yeah. There's Krampus. There's um, Office Christmas Party. There, there's a ton. A night before. There's a lot. Um, so, what do you guys think? I was just saying, between us, we have nine kids, Whew. and uh, his his kids are all grown. Sure. My kids are grown and mostly grown. Uh-huh. But uh, part of the the joy of a really good Christmas movie, uh-huh. such as A Christmas Story, 
is the relatability of the characters to the kids, but right. also to the adults, because there are so many innuendos in that movie in, mm. in particular that kids are not supposed to get either. And that makes it fun for the adults, too. Right. Right. And Carlson, what about you? I, I think it's just make it a, a feeling. I think it I think good acting and good script conveys a, a Christmas feeling. You know, with Elf, you have the whole idea that, you know, here is a um, crazy wild story, a, a unique story of an elf getting, you know, back to his dad mm-hmm. and whatever. But ultimately it's about when you um, get the Christmas spirit, you sing loud, you do those things, then the believing makes the season, right? The sled flies. Right. I think with... When you're dealing with uh, the um, the the one you said the classic earlier, the the it's a wonderful life. Same thing. I think there's that feeling of I can I can relate, but it's just a it's a good feeling. And when at the end, when he says, you know, Clarence says, you know, obviously the when the bell rings every uh, time the bell rings, an angel gets her wings. Right. There's just that moment of ah, there's like something that's just like about the Christmas spirit that feels you. And I think that's good acting and good script. And it's just one of those things you can't. You, you probably don't even know it when you're shooting the film until mm-hmm. people get that feeling watching the film. Right. And I think that's and and just just to go back specifically to Elf, I think that's what makes it at least for for us, at least what makes it special and makes it, you know, up there in the upper echelon of, of Christmas films is the fact that, like you said, it's 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 this brand new story you it's go i i was talking with my girlfriend the other day about christmas songs and we talked about how very few new christmas songs have become popular uh within the last like 30 years and stuff there's definitely a couple there's you know mariah carey and taylor swift and kelly clarkson have, have each had had a few um but a lot of the ones that you hear nowadays they're just they're just remakes they're you know um they're renditions of classics that were written in you know the the 40s through the 80s um so you see that a lot in film too they you know the i mean hell scrooged you know it took christmas carol and just put it in modern day elf is a brand new thought-provoking storyline that has never been attempted before and you know they i don't know quintessential 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 christmas movie for me you know it had it had all the songs it had the cheer it had the comedy it had the heartfelt moments the family the tenderness uh you know so uh i guess y'all are right i guess you know it's it's certainly a it's a subjective thing i guess it just depends on who you are and what you grew up with and what gives you that warm nostalgia feeling and there you go you go from there uh, so yeah, let's 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 move on to to the last portion of the to the last portion of the show. Uh, and feel free to get the debates rolling on this one. Most overrated Christmas films of all time. This does not necessarily let me uh, let me uh, you know go ahead and set up a couple of uh, uh, predeterminers here. Uh, it can still be a good film. This movie you mentioned can still mm-hmm. be great. It can still be a fantastic film. Uh, you just might think that the hype around it is overblown okay or maybe you just think it's a bad movie while everybody else loves it i think you know we've already talked about elf so let's move on to another one um let's pick something else um but yeah let's let's go ahead and uh switch it up uh a little bit uh gary i'll give you first crack on this one since you haven't gone first yet uh what do you think what's the most over what's one of the most overrated christmas films of all time uh for me it's uh one of them is white christmas it's a 1954 with bing crosby what yeah um, you gotta be kidding me we i think we've watched that like five christmases in a row with the exception of like last year yeah and i mean it, it's a fine movie but i don't think it's as great as uh it's made out to be wow. you know it's it's kind of boring you know kind of slow why do you watch it consistently then you know i don't know really yeah i'm so you disagree I'm, i i do certainly disagree okay. but i'm just i'm baffled man i don't know what to say like i you that really came out of left field yes, i did not yes, expect did. you to say that um I mean, I, I, I could disagree with you on so many levels. I mean, it made the song White Christmas famous. Uh, it was one of the... It's a still Which talked about Christmas is, movie. I from, believe the number one selling Christmas song of all time, Bing Crosby's White Christmas. You should look that up. I, I guess I'm not, I can. I'm not doubting that, but I am doubting that at the same time. Uh, I don't know. It it's White Christmas was written for Holiday Inn. Yeah, and I remember... I mean, yeah, you had just you had just said that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. It, does anybody else share this this sentiment with with Gary, who likes to drink as Carlton so eloquently quoted that that haterade? Haterade yeah. <laughs> for every show. For every, that's right. <laughs> he does. It's it's fine. He does. I have to deal with this on a weekly basis, man. I don't know why I'm still doing weekly it. Weekly. I don't pay me. Down my elf. It's just it's just 
He's just put a whole new spin on this show today. <laughs> yep, yep. Just ruined Johnny's Christmas. It really has. You, I'm going to cry. Yep. <laughs> you know. Uh, and it, it, Does anybody else feel like that? I just, just out of curiosity. I, no hate for me if, if you do. Um, There's plenty of hate from Johnny. Don't you worry. Well, I've never seen it, so I don't know. Oh. Oh, you, you should you should give it a try if you ever Told get the you. chance. You should give it a try if you ever get the chance. It's a it's one that it it certainly stands the test of time. That's for sure. Um, I got a young one here. <laughs> Neil, how about you? you I'm just it? a baby. <laughs> Remember, she's younger than all of us combined. Combined. <laughs> combined. Yeah. Uh, Neil, what about you? Have you have you seen My Christmas? I have. I think it's a great movie. I I get what Gary's saying. Uh, but I don't think it's that overrated. Okay. I think it is a good movie. So Gary, that's I. I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm okay. I'm flummoxed. I don't. I don't know. What well, to thank I, you. I, yeah. I, again, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but I just think it's you overrated. You just called it boring. I, at times, boring, it certainly boring, is. Boring. Okay, so at times it drags. Yeah. I mean, because you're saying it's boring. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, like the end when they sing "White Christmas" is great, of course. There's at, tons of funny moments, though. Are there? Yeah, there's, there's there, when they're when they're trying to get them to talk to each other again. There's a lot of moments from like noises off and things that are very similar to those scene, types of scenes. And you know, where like one person's looking for another, and they walk around the corner, and the other person comes walking around the corner looking for them, and they just keep missing each other by hair. I love I love it when okay. movies when movies have that when they follow that formula. Anyways, farce. Yeah, and it, it certainly it certainly is. Yeah, it certainly has farcical moments. Absolutely. Um, if that's a great film. No, I mean it's called a farce. <laughs> but, um, so what would okay? So Carlton, what what, what would you say? Uh, what would you say yours is? Uh, most overrated. Car- oh, there, there you go. Uh, yeah, your most overrated film. Um, gosh, I don't know. I've been. Mean, Things that I see every year that I think should not be played again. I uh, Jingle All the Way is one of them. Oh, um, you're killing me. My heart just broke again. Everybody's just taking don't, jabs don't, at me all day. How am I gonna stay? Don't like, keep don't going? like that movie. Keep going. I, I'm drinking I don't know. that Haterade. Sin, Sinbad is not an actor. <laughs> Welcome to Jonestown, population, you and me. <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, um, so, why? Why do you, why do you think it's and so reindeer? Funny? Reindeer games. Ben Affleck. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I, yeah, I would say that's, I would say it's overrated because I had always heard that was like a Christmas cult classic and I've only watched it one time and I just thought it was kind of, and I didn't even end up in a cult. I know. (laughs) I just thought it was so far. (laughs) You didn't wind up in a cult. That's pretty good. (laughs) And I was just like, I was like, it's, it's all right. I don't really know why it'd be a cult classic, but whatever, you know, what, what about for you for, for Jingle All the Way? Like I've, I've heard a lot of people agree with you. Like this, this sentiment is, you know, spread widely through, throughout my friend and or my social circles. Um, I think it's you? overproduced. I think it's too much money spent on everything to, to make it look like some kind of great movie. But I mean, it just didn't bring it. It doesn't have, um, I mean, again, those things that we really want to have is like the spirit of Christmas. Does it come out? Do you get excited? Do you, you know, do you have that moment where you're like, okay, this is, um, you know, I've, I'm lit up with this Christmas spirit. I don't get it in that movie. I don't, I don't, you know, um, I think again, a lot of money spent on actors. Obviously, you know, uh, you know, uh, Arnold's in that thing, and, yeah, and that's your money there. But, and Phil Hartman. Yep, Phil Hartman. <laughs> you know, and what? And I love Phil Hartman. I can't think of another bad thing he's ever done. But that's just an overrated movie. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Filled with those Arnold one-liners. Just saying. Just saying. Love those Arnold one-liners. Um, uh, Sean, what about you? Um, mine's actually up on Mount Rushmore and I already expressed my dislike for it, but you know, I'm, I'm just not into the whole, every time a bell rings, an angel oh, gets its right. wings. Okay. That's right. Uh, that, that movie was just really super boring to me. I, I did. I've had a lot of, I have met a few people outside of you that, yeah, they said it was, it just kind of dragged on a little too much. Uh, and they wish that the story would have picked up at some point, uh, when it never yes. did. So, okay. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Neil. So, uh, my wife, Susanna, loves this movie. She watches it every Christmas, and I know she's not alone, but I just cannot get into it, and I actually hate this movie. Okay. I think it's so overrated. I love, actually. Really? Like, she watches it every Christmas, and I just can't stand it. I don't know if it's just because uh, I don't like... Um, what's his name? The guy who plays the prime minister... 
Oh God, I can't remember. I haven't seen it. Hugh Grant. Hugh, is Hugh Grant? Yeah, I, I don't know, but I just cannot follow that movie. Okay. All right. Um, you know, for the longest time, I I thought that was a, a New Year's movie. <laughs> it wasn't until like a few years ago that I watched it again. I was like, wait. I'm an idiot. This was based completely around Christmas. Uh, yeah, I mean, are are you a fan of of like romance films, like rom coms and stuff like that? Or are, you, do you, are there any that you like? Not typically. Not typically. Not typically. Okay. Well, I think that would make sense then, I guess. Um, mine, st- mind you, still like this movie. Watched it a ton as a kid. Just think it's over overrated because honestly, they took the same the same script and formula from the first movie, added it to the second. Um, I, I thought Home Alone two, you know what is it lost in new york yeah i always thought that one was a little over i i do actually like that movie like if it's on tv i'll i'll check it out for about you know five ten minutes mm-hmm. um how come was, nobody would tell him where the lobby was i, d- I don't it, there, I, there was one person that did. <laughs> there was one person i and who, i don't know at the at the end so like in the first movie he had the next door neighbor and the resolution for the next door neighbor was he finally says hello to his son who he hasn't spoken to in years, gets to see his granddaughter for Christmas for the first time in, in a couple of years. And it's that heartfelt moment we talked about, which mm-hmm. is critical for a Christmas classic. Right. In the second one, the pigeon lady who is basically homeless lives at the top of the, the opera or the, the theater. Um, she says, don't worry. We'll always be friends. And that's it. She's, she's still homeless. She's still without a job. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like if the, I don't know if, Maybe Kevin's parents had given her some money or given her a job reference or the the hotel that, you know, that he was staying at. Maybe they gave her a job. Um, they stayed in contact. I don't know. Had there been some more, you know, uh, a more heartfelt resolution to it, I might have liked it a little bit more. I don't know. Well, ultimately, I just thought it was kind of over, overplayed because it was the same formula yeah. as the first one. Uh, ultimately, Child Protective Services should have stepped in <laughs> at the end of that movie and taken those Probably. children away from those parents. Absolutely. Because, I mean, once is an accident. Twice. I mean... The, the police, right. they should have... I mean, they they correct me if I'm wrong, but they, they can... Can they give the police permission to break into the home and go search for him? If they feel the child's in danger. Right, right. But, I mean, the parents, they called and they're like, hey, go knock on the door. Like in the first one, they like oh. knock on the door and see if he's home. And Kevin's too scared to come answer. downstairs and answer it. So he hides under the parent's bed. Mm-hmm. And he never comes down. So they just think he's not there. I mean, like in a real life situation, does anybody know if they if the parents could give permission and be like, yes, bust the door in and go see where he is. Take him out and, you know, hold him until we get back, I guess. He was in a comfortable large house. He's fine. Yeah, yeah, no problems I mean, he, at all. How old was he in the first one? Like 9, 10, yeah, 15? Uh, how old can, are kids? You can I don't leave know. your kids home for, you know, 72 <laughs> hours by themselves and they're yeah. 9. I mean, I love that there was no neighbors to call. No one had a spare key. <laughs> <laughs> They're just they're they're recl- they're reclusive. It's fine. They just keep to themselves. Yeah. Well, that's because the McAllisters. Uh, that's because Mr. McAllister was actually in the drug trade, and yeah, so course. all of his neighbors were terrified of him. So they didn't. I wanna... mean, that's the only way you can afford that house yes. with that many kids. I'm I'm kids. I'm, 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 abs- I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, so, some in, some interesting ones to hear from uh, from everybody. I, I like to hear the different perspectives uh, that we all look at these these films at because uh, you know it's it's hard for everybody to agree on everything. So that's what makes life so interesting. Uh, I want to move over really quick before we uh, wrap up tonight. Uh, Gary has a new segment that he started uh, a couple weeks ago, and we forgot it on our last episode. So I want to make sure that we do not pass it over this time. Uh, Gary, take it away. Okay, so this segment is uh, I take a movie and then I come up with a really bad tagline that uh, they would the Ho- the Hollywood studios rejected and did not end up using. So I'm going to pose one of these to each of uh, the people on the panel and uh, see if you can guess it. And uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, Carlton, let's start with you, sir. Okay, so your tagline, and uh, let me give you an example one. So. Uh, the tagline is, old lady tells the story about a boat on a different boat. That would be for the movie Titanic. You just gave me the yeah. answer, Gary. What the hell? Well, I, I, wanted, I, I wanted him <laughs> to see how, how, the, how the game's played. Okay. So, <clears throat> husband loses patience with his family at an all-inclusive winter resort. The great outdoors. <laughs> this is not a Christmas movie, Gary. <laughs> it's kind of. Uh, it's not. Just because there's snow. <laughs> uh, that would be The Shining. 
gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Horrible, Gary. <laughs> that works too. Okay. Um, so not a Christmas movie. So not a Christmas movie. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, it's got snow. That, that's all that counts. That's all that matters. I can right? see Sean and I watching on Christmas. It's so. not Christmas till <laughs> I see an elevator for what? In that one. Okay. Well, look. Yeah. Uh, none of these are, will be Christmas movies. Just to make it easier. And okay. More off topic. Oh, there you go. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> You, you really threw Things us have been a helpful yesterday. Oh, that <laughs> would have been useful gear. yesterday. <laughs> um, uh, so, Shauna, um, we'll go to you next. Um, kid has a close relationship with an older man who suffered a head injury, and the kid ends up kissing his mother. Ooh, I don't. Again, this is not a Christmas movie. <laughs> no, definitely movie. not not a Christmas movie. But I'm. Thinking Oedipus, but <laughs> I think it's more like um, the Sixth Sense. Uh, close. It's Back to the Future. How is that oh, close? No. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. <laughs> In all fairness, you should have been picking Christmas movies for this segment. You should have. I assume you're going to be Christmas movies. Oh. Johnny. Okay. <clears throat> Not um, a Christmas movie. Gotcha. Not a Christmas movie. All right. Okay. So it's not it's not Jingle All the Way or Elf. No. Okay. No. <laughs> um, a moody teen is sent to her room, and her mother asks for the assistance from her priest to help guide the teen through her issues. Oh my God! You're doing Halloween movie. You're doing fucking horror movies right now. <laughs> that's uh. That's, oh God! It's, it's the, a re- the Stephen uh, Carey. <laughs> no. 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 What is it? Neil. <laughs> very good. Very good. What, uh, say again. The Exorcist. The Exorcist. The Exorcist. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. But you know why I know that? Because last time I was on the show, you had the exact same question for me. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Oh. Because I said Poltergeist, and then I said Exorcist uh, last time. Oh. Oh, Gary just got called. Gary out. just called oh, out. Snap. Reusing content. Gary, you should oh, be ashamed. So of we're no. using warmed up leftovers here tonight, guys. I see what it is, Gary. You got I the see. fresh one. That was that wasn't for you. <laughs> that was you Gary's did. new I, one. Yeah, I got a fresh one. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks no for problem. mine. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, Neil, a couple of guys try to return a briefcase to their boss while a retired pugilist decides to move to a new city. I've never seen this one the other day, actually. I can't remember what it is, though. Uh, <laughs> that would be uh, Pulp Fiction. Very good. Very good. <laughs> very good. All right. Um, uh, Neil, you get a point. Good job. I, I give you. I award you 5,217 points. <laughs> it, 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 it is your game. You can recommend whatever you like. <laughs> All right. Neil's in the lead of the FedEx Cup. <laughs> if FedEx was our sponsor, it would, it, would, it would be He juiced. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for playing. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Let's do Christmas movies next week. That'd be awesome. Where's the fun in that? It makes it too easy. There's tons of Christmas films. If you just did Hallmark or Lifetime films, everybody oh, would lose. God. Oh god. Oh, there's a lot lose. of them. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen enough of those to do I that. God. You've seen you've seen you've seen one, you've seen them all. We've established that. Yeah, already. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Colonel uh, Sanders gets raped and tortured. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I'm gonna watch the heck out of that. Tomorrow. Um, anyways, uh, before we uh, wrap up tonight, I want to go around. Uh, so uh, uh, Carlton and Shauna, if you guys don't remember, we uh, we give uh, one recommendation per person. It can certainly be a movie we talked about uh, for our listeners to uh, check out for this week. I think this month uh, is more critical than than any month because we all definitely need that Christmas cheer at a at a time like this for sure. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the panel. Uh, Neil, let's go ahead and start with you. What movie are you recommending for viewers to watch this holiday season? Uh, so for me, uh, my recommendation for those who haven't seen it would be 1983's Trading Places with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. Uh, it is around the Christmas season when all of it takes place. So I consider it a Christmas movie. And I just think it's a, it's a well done Classic movie with two very funny people. Absolutely. 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 Uh, Gary, let's jump over to you. Uh, I was trying to think of a, a movie that maybe not a whole bunch of people had seen. It, you know, it was a kind of popular movie um, uh, when it came out. But uh, I, I, I chose this one because uh, Santa is handing out weapons to children. And I think that's a great, uh, great message. Um, it's the Chronicles of Narnia. Narnia, that's right. Um, so <laughs> yeah. there's a whole whole lot of uh, stuff to dissect with that. 
<laughs> Christmas movie. It's got Santa in it and like when the, the hell lions. Are you Jesus. talking about the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe? Yeah. I don't remember. When was Santa in it? Uh, he's, I remember, he's, in win- it at the, he's in it at the end and gives them the weapons before they go to battle. Okay. Come on, Johnny. Get I, with the times here. I don't. Uh, all right. I don't remember the ending battle scene very much. I know that they're, you know, they have the Ice Queen. Yeah. Tilda Swinton does. Okay. Yeah. All uh, right. It, it's, uh, it's an interesting movie um, and uh, looks really nice and is well done. Um, and again, Santa's handing out weapons to children. So oh. what more do you need? Yeah, that's that's a great lesson to teach uh, teach kids around the holidays. Oh, well, just knock Santa off the roof and kill him and steal his identity. Okay, thank you, Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. We that, all that was we all horrible. Have horrible. <laughs> impersonations of Tim Allen. Oh, 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 I'm Tim Allen. <laughs> what? Uh, Shauna, what would uh, your recommendation be for our listeners for this week? watch a whole lot of christmas movies so i i would have to just stick with the christmas story if you have not seen that movie you need to see that movie there's just so much in it that it that touches everybody it really is if 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 you if if you're not if you're standing around a group of people and somebody says a line from that film and you don't get it you should be ashamed of yourself for sure right Whole, uh, wholeheartedly agree uh carlton how about you well, we said it before, and 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 it's on the wall. Or it's on the. I'm sorry, it's on the uh, the um, the mount. So I'm going to say, yeah. Elf. Preach. And I know people haven't seen it. I know they they don't. Um, again, I I've, I've I swore the outfit out before, and I've actually people say to me, "What movie are you from?" So <laughs> it's not like everybody's seen it yet. True. So go see Elf. It's actually in theaters in the in uh, some of the Metroplex areas. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can even watch it on the big screen right now while the theaters are kind of opening back up helps us all out to go to theaters because again our industry needs that um Amen. so uh, keep the theaters open go see elf absolutely uh alamo draft house having those watch parties right now for sure elf die hard national lampoon's christmas vacation a couple other ones going mm-hmm. on yeah totally check it out uh mine for the mine for this week uh is is going to be one gary mentioned uh a muppet christmas carol is really is really a it's a very funny uh it's not even it's really just it's not even just a kid's movie um it really that was the first movie when i was a kid that i recognized who michael Caine was Mm -hmm. um and for those that if you haven't seen it he plays ebenezer scrooge and uh it's just it takes you back man it was the last good muppet movie i feel um, was, was that before or after Treasure Island? Because I like Treasure Island. That was after, I think, by two years. Okay. I, th- I think. Maybe not. I could be wrong. Um, I, I don't want to look it up right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, definitely better than Muppets from Outer Space, that's for sure. Uh, so that's that's my pick this week, and that is certainly uh, that is certainly a family one as well that you can uh, watch with your kids. Uh, so, uh, once again, guys, uh, so, uh, Shauna Carlson, thank you guys so much for joining us this week. It was a pleasure having you. I know you guys are super busy, especially with just wrapping, um, your latest project. Uh, so nothing but, uh, good luck and fortune to you guys in the coming weeks before the new year. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us. We really loved having you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, and for all of us here at I don't give a flick. I'm Johnny. I'm Gary. I'm new. Happy holidays guys. <laughs> See you next week. Ho, ho, ho. Thank you for tuning in to Leadfeather Productions' podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Leadfeather production. Copyright Leadfeather Productions 2020.